In this video, we derive an expression for the chemical potential of a solute in an ideal dilute solution. Okay, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to write the chemical potential of various species that might participate in a chemical reaction or in a mixture uh, as a function of the concentration of that species in the mixture or in the chemical reaction. And again, this is very useful because it's going to allow us uh, to uh, uh, understand the stability of mixtures, the property of mixtures, and also chemical equilibrium, which is very, very important. All right, so far we've learned how to calculate the chemical potential for an ideal gas and an ideal solution. And uh, here in this video, what we do is try to apply Henry's law to understand how to write the chemical potential for the solute in an ideal dilute solution. Okay, uh, here we have Henry's Law, there's four versions of them, and the one that we're going to be uh, using in this video, for convenience, is simply going to be this one. Okay, uh, the way that we're going to uh, carry out this derivation is much as what we did here for an ideal solution. We're going to start from the ideal gas case and then apply Henry's Law to see how we can transform that expression into something that is useful for a solute in an ideal dilute solution. Okay, so let me take this, this expression for an ideal gas, which is right here, and say, well, uh, the chemical potential of component J in an ideal gas mixture is simply the chemical potential of that component at the standard state, plus a correction, which is RT natural log, the vapor, vapor pressure of that component J, divided over the standard pressure of one bar. Okay, great. So the idea then is that now we can actually use Henry's law to be able to replace this partial pressure right there uh, by something that depends on the concentration of uh, uh, the solute in the solution. Okay? And uh, there's one important thing as well. Uh, don't forget that here we have the molar, uh, sorry, the chemical potential or the molar gives energy of a component in the gas phase, but we will want to have it in the liquid phase. Right? But again, remember that something that is very important here is that if you have equilibrium between the liquid and the gas phase, then the chemical potentials have to be exactly the same for that component, right? So the chemical potential of uh, that component in the gas phase has to be identical to that in the liquid phase if you're at equilibrium. Okay, so we can again directly assume that we are at equilibrium and then say, well, that is going to be the same as the chemical potential of that component in the liquid phase. And now this is a solute in an ideal dilute solution. All right, so let's see how we actually do that. Now this won't be A, instead it's going to be something more generic that is going to be J. Okay, so let's write that as J and J. All right, so what I'm going to do here is manipulate this a little bit better, uh, a little bit for convenience, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is just multiply and divide by the concentration of J at this standard state. Okay, and this, uh, I haven't changed the expression at all because I'm multiplying and divided by the same quantity. And what is the concentration of J at the standard state? This standard state is completely arbitrary and it's made up, but it's one that is convenient. The uh, concentration of the standard state is simply one molar, one mole per liter. Much as the pressure of the standard state is arbitrarily defined as one bar, we can define a sta standard state as uh, in liquid solution as that being of a concentration of one molar. And again, this is simply done for convenience. But again, now what we actually have is an expression that we can plug into this one, right, that replace that partial pressure of J, right, to find out how to write the chemical potential of this solute in the ideal dilute solution. So I'm going to give me myself a little bit more room uh, it's going to be the chemical potential of J in the liquid phase is going to be equal to the chemical potential of J in the gas phase at the standard state plus RT natural log of this value for Henry's uh, constant or Henry's law which will be uh, just the uh, concentration of J divided over the concentration of uh, J at the standard state multiply by this Henry's constant, KHJ triple prime, concentration of J at the standard state, divided over this pressure at the standard state. Okay, so I have all that. All right, so it looks quite complicated, but it really isn't, as you're going to see. The first thing that I'm going to do is uh, simply uh, uh, separate this uh, logarithm 
into 2. Right, so I'm going to have uh, this term is going to originate 2. One of them is going to be RT natural log of the ratio of these concentrations, and the other one is going to be RT natural log of the rest. Okay, so let's see if I can write that. Mu of J in the liquid phase is equal to mu of J in the gas phase at the standard state, plus, first I'm going to write this RT natural log of this uh, enchilada there, RT natural log of KHJ triple prime J standard state over pressure at the standard state. Okay, and then let me erase this so that I continue to go ahead plus RT natural log of the concentration of J over the concentration of J at standard state, which we know is uh, yes, one molar. Okay, that's the expression that you have right here. All right, so again, this looks quite complicated, but it really is not at all. The question really is, well, what is this thing? Right? This seems to be quite complicated. Well, the question is, what is it? It actually turns out that it's not complicated at all. We're going to find the value of this by simply assuming that the concentration of J is equal to one molar. Okay, let's try to do that. Uh, well, one molar is the concentration uh, at the center of state, right? So uh, whatever I calculate out here is going to be the chemical potential of J when it's at the standard state. Because again, I'm calculating this at one molar, and arbitrarily we have said that the standard state is going to be a situation where I have a one molar concentration of my solute. Okay, all right, so then I will have that this still is, is all that, right? So this mu j standard state of the gas plus RT natural log of all of this uh, concentration of j standard state over P standard state, and then I come to this term. Notice that if I make now this concentration of J one molar, what I have here is a natural log of one, but that is zero. Okay, so what I get is that this term that, I'm, that is kind of driving me crazy, it really is simply the chemical potential of that solute in the solution at the center state, which is a concentration of one molar. Right, so I can simply rewrite uh, this expression as the chemical potential of J, actually I'm going to write it here because it's our final expression, the chemical potential of J uh, in that liquid uh, phase is going to be the chemical potential of J at the standard state, the liquid phase, plus the natural log, or RT natural log, of the concentration of J over the concentration of J at the standard state, where this is just one molar. Okay, that's it. All right, uh, great. So uh, notice how beautiful and simple that expression is, and it's very similar to what actually we had uh, for an ideal gas and also an ideal solution, right? But now this is going to apply for the solute in an ideal delute solution. And this is something extremely useful because now you can think about all of the solution chemistry that you've been working on in the lab and in other courses where you take maybe water, which is your solvent, and you add a little bit of maybe calcium carbonate or maybe a little bit of, of uh, acid. Those concentrations of that calcium carbonate, that acid, that, that uh, biomolecule that you have there, that protein, those are really small, generally. And then what happens is that you are in conditions of ideal dilute solutions. Right? And what that means is that the uh, chemical potentials for all of those sol solids that you have in that aqueous solution can be written as that. Right? So, so this is going to be perhaps the, the most useful uh, chemical potential that we're going to be handling from now on, uh, also uh, uh, you know, together with the one for an ideal gas, which, which, will be, uh, which will appear in chemical equilibrium as well. Okay, so uh, in this video, what we have done is, is we have found a way to write chemical potential for a solid in an ideal dilute solution. Uh, that chemical potential is going to be extremely useful once we move forward to understand chemical equilibrium.